you have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Past episodes of the Authentic Business Adventures program can be found on the podcast link at drawincustomers.com. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. Today, we are welcoming slash preparing to learn from Randy Lenz from Next Home Metro. Randy, how are you doing today? I'm great, James. How are you today? You know, I'm doing well. I'm figuring out technology, but outside of that, I'm doing I'm doing all right. You are a master. There's no question about that. A master <laughs> that, of all trades. That I can totally deny. <laughs> <laughs> totally deny. So, Randy, you're with Next Home. Correct. Now, I've had a few people, a few real estate agents on the show. Yes. Um, from way green to what I would consider to be way experienced. But you are the one that's taking it to another level with an, your own brokerage. Correct. Which is fantastic to me. I'm loving it. Absolutely so loving it. you got to tell me a story. How did you get into real estate? And let's just walk it through here. All right. So I started in real estate back in another century. All right. Um, and at that time, it was a whole different game. Um, but I got into it because uh, I had graduated at uh, UW, Madison, Wisconsin here. Yeah. Um, in journalism. Okay. And got a job immediately at the State Journal the first day I was here. That's and awesome. as I graduated, then that kind of transformed into a full-time job covering the, the Packers. Yeah. And at that point, it was, it was kind of fun, but not really because they were just making me go back back and forth from Milwaukee to Green Bay. So at yeah. that time, the Packers played in Milwaukee. Right. Now they don't. Um, but I convinced them to send me to games all across the country. So I'm the first nice. person uh, for a sports writer yeah. um, that was actually traveling with the Packers and going to Denver and Los Angeles and, and Tampa and, and New York and Pittsburgh and all the places that the Packers played, which was really great. The problem was, at that time, the Packers sucked. They were just terrible. I mean, they right. were just 7-9, and 6-10, and 10, and it really got to a point where I'm thinking, this is not as much fun after two years uh, as I thought it would be. Right. So I started looking for other things to do, and that's where real estate kind of popped up that's a crazy switch but what i mean you're traveling all over the country essentially right on yes. somebody else's dime on someone else's dime which i imagine a newspaper would have a rougher time doing that now they would if there's even a newspaper out there i'm anymore. sure there's one or two right? <laughs> <laughs> it's called blogs now but yeah anyways that's a whole nother story so but you're traveling all over the country you having fun even though the packers weren't doing so hot truly but uh, it reached a certain point where you know you just you just don't want to quote these guys who are really in a position where they're not the kind of people that you want to be around. They were sure. just terrible players. They were, you know, I remember quoting one person and thinking, who's the real idiot here, me or them? Sure. Because I'm quoting someone that shouldn't even be quoted in a newspaper. Oh, no. And then I realized, oh, okay, I'm the idiot because sure. I'm, I'm the one who's here. I need to get out of here. And I had been watching. So my hours at the at the State Journal were 6 to 2 a.m. That was kind of cool. So oh, I had really? all my days open. Nice. I was, I'm, I'm not a huge sleeper, so I mean, sure. I, could, I could make <laughs> I it work. Not. And I could spend um, the whole day doing something else. So watching all these no money down real estate things, I thought, yeah. okay, I could do that. So of course I go out and buy a property. Now get this, James. First property I buy, east side of Madison. Little house, three bedroom house. Yeah. Garage, detached garage. Yeah. Twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it's not even a down payment today, you know. <laughs> right. But but back then that was it. And I also learned the value of partners because of course I bought it with a partner who provided the loan, but then he disappeared. So it needed a lot of work. So uh -huh. I'm the one who ended up going in and, and doing all the fix up and all learning right. a lot of things myself. Sure. Um the, the most important lesson is don't step between Joyce because <laughs> I made that mistake once. Sure. And of course went through the uh, the ceiling and broke three ribs when I hit the joist on the way down. And all the way through. All the way through. And then hit the floor on my back, and all the vermiculite and all the insulation from up uh, in the ceiling was Just falling into my face. Just thank you for putting the hole yeah. in the ceiling. So you learn real fast. I've never made that mistake sure. again. Don't step between the joists. <laughs> <Right? laughs> um, but sold that. All right. Interesting sale because the guy who bought it um, when I put it up for sale um, wa drove up in a red Corvette and he got out of the car and, and bought the house. He said, I'm just moving to Madison. Turns out that the guy was Randy Alexander, who now runs the commercial Alexander yeah. companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was kind of uh, an interesting touchstone over, over the years to see where all these kind of sure. people kind of played out. But. I also realized at that point that maybe it was time to look at another career change because I really enjoyed doing that. Yeah. And so gradually over the next year, I just phased out of the state journal and went into real estate full time. Nice. So you, so his job out of college was journalism. 
Yep. And then into real estate just like that. Yep. So I, I started buying properties in 1981, and then 1987 I became a member of the uh, Greater Madison Board of Realtors, right. which is now called the, the Southern Southwest Wisconsin Board of Realtors. Okay. So you got to tell me a story here. Sure. Realtor is a trademark name, right? Yes. So you have to pay a nut every year? Oh, James, I could hug you. You actually pronounced it correctly. Realtor. You, yes. <laughs> Do you know how many people go to um, how many people go to their Docator. How many people go to sure. drive a tractor? <laughs> Don't. But how many people say realtor? There is no A sure. in the middle of my, right, what right. I do, okay? Right. It is realtor. Perfect, James. Thank right. you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Wisconsin accent. It's coming through here. <laughs> so, but you've got to pay them a nut, essentially, to get their MLS, or I guess I'm not clear what exactly they do. The, oh, the board? Yeah. Um, yes, they provide basically the best thing they do. I mean, there are a lot of education programs and sure. things like that, too, but it's getting the cooperative co-brokerage board uh, of the multiple listing service, basically. So okay. any property that's out there, any other realtor can sell or okay. show. Um, and it doesn't matter the name of the company. I have to let my uh, the buyer clients that we work with know that because a lot of times they just assume, oh, well, you know, what does Next Home do? You know, are we only uh, able to see Next Home properties? But oh, no, sure. we, can, we can show anything. Century right. 21, uh, Remax, Caldwell Banker, whatever the, the company, sure. any company can, we can show any other company, any other company can show our listings. All right. That's super cool. So, it is that. It is. So how long, I guess, just tell me about the evolution of your, your being a real estate agent. You, I imagine you had to get your name out there. You do, really early, because there's 1,700 realtors in our marketplace. and, and Is there it, really? Quite frankly, there are probably four or five other Randys. So if I don't do a really good job oh, of separating myself, it's like <laughs> sure. they, they don't know. Um you do. I mean, a lot of it is marketing. I did a huge amount of that. I did billboards. I did a 30-minute infomercial. I'm probably the only realtor in Madison. Did you really? Infomercial, yep. How, are we talking uh, 80s still, or are we talking no, 90s? we're talking probably early 90s at this point. And we're talking like 2 a.m.? Um, yeah, somewhere in there. But, I mean, at that time, we didn't have 350 channels. So, I sure. mean, I could hit the, the big four or five channels right. and, and make an impression. Whereas I wouldn't even consider it now because there's so many channels you can't, as an individual or even sure. a small company, create an impression with right. an infomercial. There's just so much noise, yep. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so we did that, and I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, got some traction. I mean, years after I stopped doing the billboards, I would I walk into a house, and some kid would be watching TV as I'm going to talk to his mom and dad, and he'd turn around and go, oh, I know you. You're the billboard guy. Nice. And it was amazing how long, James, that kind of wow. name recognition and branding sure. stayed on. That's very so it cool. Helped. Yeah, it helped. All right. So you got to do that. You just absolutely have to do that. I'm the sure. only person in my family that's ever been in sales. So a lot of it was just hit and miss with me because right. I had no idea. I had no no sales background where I could sure. even talk to people about it. But I like talking to people, and I'm yeah. you know, I'm a pretty gregarious guy. So it's yeah. like, and it was pretty easy to get into. Nice. And Madison, you'd come to Madison specifically for school. It sounds like yes. Or, okay. Yep. And then just end up staying here because you love winter. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were a lot of other reasons, but uh, I'll tell you, I'll give you the story as to why I came to Madison. Sure. So my dad was a superintendent of schools over in the Milwaukee area at a place called Sussex Hamilton. Okay. And he used to ask me if I wanted to go up to the Department of Financial Institutions, because which is here in Madison, because sure. he had to file reports. So he would always take me up and we'd have dinner and that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I remember going up, coming up a couple times and... Um, all of a sudden, I would see just kids running everywhere and all this activity. I'm thinking, man, this is so cool. It's exactly where I want to be when I go to school. Yeah. My dad never said a word, totally uh. silent in the car. Years later, when I started looking back to that period of time, I'm realizing that this is the time and the period of the Dow chemical riots. Oh, and all those sure. kids running were trying to get away from the cops and sure. being tear gas and things like that. <laughs> My dad didn't say a word, right? Sure. And we're just driving through it. And I'm well, just thinking, son. Yeah, all the energy and excitement, this is where I want to go. So yeah. that's, that's what really, really what got me here. Yeah. What are all these clouds of tear gas? <laughs> what a fun place. It was. It was. <laughs> and awesome. it's been great. I mean, I, I love living here. I, I looked around after I graduated. Uh, sure. and other places and uh, just the energy and the environment I mean it, this Madison is two different cities it really is I mean Sun Prairie is just exploding right now but yeah. Madison is two different cities in the summer when the students are gone it's so quiet so peaceful it's a lot of fun walking up and down State Street or going mm -hmm. to the Union and now they're all back this week they're all back and it's that energy and that excitement that sure. exuberance is just crazy and sure. you feed off of that so I'm, I love it every year suddenly here. we're viewed as creepy old men because we're amongst, amongst college people we're, yes. we're just here for the ice cream and beer <laughs> 
Well, the, the beer works too. Sure. But I mean, just the energy is what really keeps me going. In yeah, the city. that's super awesome. Yeah. I like it. So how did you decide, or I guess, did you use your, I want to ask you about the journalism thing. Sure. Did you have, you must have had some name recognition then. I did, yeah. So people are like, oh, you're the journalism. You're the guy that tells us that the Packers are not winning. I mean, I'm the first person that just used their initials. And, and quite frankly, the publisher of the State Journal hated that I did that and didn't have my, use my name. Oh, really? So I went under the byline of R.R. Lens. All right. And um, yeah, got a fair amount of, 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 of publicity and, and notoriety because of that. Sure. But it was um, it was a lot of fun. I remember, you know, Bart Starr was a hero of mine when I was growing up as a yeah. player. And and then he became one of the, the terrible coaches that they okay. had, along with Forrest <laughs> Gregg and a bunch of others. Sure. Um, and I remember interviewing him one time and just thinking, boy, how much it's, things have changed because this is someone I idolized when I was right. growing up. And now he's, so such, he's about ready to get fired. And uh, <laughs> I'm probably doing my last interview, which, which actually turned out to be true. Funny. <laughs> he was gone like about a month later. Interesting. Yeah. All right. But nice guy, sweet guy. I mean, just yeah. really, really um, someone that you would could aspire to be to because he All just right. treated everyone as kindly as 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 you thought you should be. Treated. Sure, sure. I yeah. well, can't blame him for trying. Yep, exactly. So did I imagine the the book of business or the number of referrals you got just grew and grew and grew over the course of time? Well, it helped because I did have that. And I think a lot of real estate people come into the business after they've been in some other profession. Sure. Because if you're smart, you keep track of all those people and you go back to them once you yeah. start this business. Yep. Um, because a lot of people, I think, in real estate assume that everyone in their family is going to work with them and everyone that they know. And, oh, and immediately, in most cases, right? It's, yeah. yeah. And it's not. I mean, it's just, you know, people will will think that they, they, and so many people, James, don't realize that I don't get a paycheck on a Friday, that there's no one that's going to send me a check right. unless I sell something. Right? right. But I think a lot of people assume that realtors somehow get paid other than selling houses. Oh, really? Uh, OK. And they just go out and, and well, here, here, have me uh, show me 10 houses or something like like that's going to help. Right. Yeah. It just wastes time. Oh, and so you learn really <laughs> do fast you a favor yeah, to just not look for those kind of favors. Sure. Let's put it that way. Right. That's fair. That's totally fair. <laughs> We've all had businesses oh, like yeah, that absolutely. where people are like, think they're doing you a favor and you're like, no, you're really just taking something for free for me that yes. I don't have the time to give you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Totally fair. Totally fair. So what made you decide to open up this brokerage then? Well, long story. I mean, again, we'll go we'll compress 35 years. So I, I opened up on my own and yeah. I was arrogant enough at that point to think that I could do it on my own. Um, That's all realized right. that was you got to be a yeah, little bit. You do. But you, I realized that was the, that was a mistake. And then right. the guy from Remax, which was just becoming a, a well-known national brand, came into the marketplace. Yeah. And I stayed. Um, I joined Remax and spent 15 years at Remax. And that wow. was fun. And I enjoyed that. And, okay. and, and I think it's a good company. Mm -hmm. um, then Keller Williams kind of became the next best thing. And I went to Keller Williams for for um, a few years, and um, that was fine too. Okay. Um, and then, you know, all of a sudden, um, I'm talking to um, friends who are, I'm thinking, are trying to recruit me back to Remax. And yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm talking to this fellow, and he says, "Oh no, I'm 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 thinking about looking at other things." Um, oh, okay. So we sat down, and we started figuring out some things, and all of a sudden, boom! Next home just kind of like starts popping up uh -huh. on our radar, and it's like, "Wow, that's reasonable, and we could do that, and, and you know, we could be the first one in." Yeah, and I literally was the first uh, the first franchise here in, in the state of Wisconsin. There are seven right now, but I was I was number one in Wisconsin. Wow. And he bails out along the way, and and I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'm still liking this a lot, and yeah. and, and just went ahead, and, sure. and we opened up as Office 50. There are now 370 um, next home <laughs> oh, offices yeah. in the country. We opened up uh, as Office 50 on January 1st of 2016, so we haven't right. even been around uh, four full years yet. Sure. But it's um it's been great. I'm I'm loving it. I, I have great people. Sure. Uh, we have a we started out in Verona. We decided that wasn't our best location. We closed that office. We moved uh, to the Beltline. Okay. And we have Beltline signage now, and we are. Oh, it's gonna be huge. It. Oh, us, James. The 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 traffic count in Verona was about 200 cars a day. Sure. We're at 181,000 according to DOT right now. A day. A day. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so there's a lot of people who are figuring out we're there now. It's finally. like the entire city of Madison <laughs> yeah, going past. Just driving by our sign. I love it. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. So you got to tell me a story, though, just backing up a step to the other brokerages. Okay. Because I'm always curious about this. You used to see brokerage signs everywhere, right? The typical right. Century 21 yeah. or, I don't know, I guess I remember seeing ERA. I don't know ERA if that was. ERA for a while, yep. You know, I don't know if I see any of those anymore, but you can tell me a story there, I guess. But I'm just wondering, why would you go from one brokerage to another brokerage? Because I see some real estate agents do that. And is there a... Are they nicer there? Is it a bigger percentage you get to keep in your pocket? Do they have more marketing or maybe it's all of that? Uh, easy answer is yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it's a perception. Okay. Um, although there are, there are some huge differences. There's no question about that. Okay. Um, 
in, in without getting into too much detail or trying to over talk a, a, an audience who really doesn't want to know what all the details of a real estate company. Sure. But um, well, they probably want to know. They we, probably. we got a we got a sharp crowd. Okay. To the well, show then, good. We'll talk to the sharp crowd then. Um, Remax was the first 100% concept, and what that means is, in the old tradition, you would pay a percentage to the broker, and you would keep a percentage. Okay. And when I first started, it was what they know as 50-50. So, in other words, everyone sees these big checks that real estate agents get, yeah. but what they don't realize is that when it's 50-50, the brokerage gets 50% of that right okay. off the bat. You get 50, and you still have to pay your expenses. Okay. Well, Remax came in, and they said, look, we're going to do 100%. You get to keep your entire check. You pay for certain things along the way. Okay. And after three years, I kind of knew what I needed to pay for. So, that was hugely appealing to me, sure. Um, whereas it might not have been for someone who was just starting and really didn't know what their expenses were. Gotcha. Um, okay. And so I, I thrived in that. I really enjoyed that marketplace. But sure. at the same time, their expenses, um, uh, ancillary expenses like uh, office rent and things like that got sure. to be much higher because uh -huh. of the fact that they were paying you everything and sure. had minimal costs. All right. And so you started getting fees for everything along the way. All right. So then <laughs> you use the staple. Right. That's uh, you, $17. 20, 22 copies. That'll sure. be 148. All right. Um, you know, that type of thing. And, and sure. so we then, um, when Keller Williams came in, they kind of changed that concept and um, started making it a little bit better and a, offered a lot more education. That was probably a biggest problem that real estate companies had is they okay. were, people get a license and they think they knew everything, but they didn't sure. have any education. Go sell. Right. right, go so sell. Keller Williams started so a huge, and, and to this day, I'll grant them uh, probably the best educational program of any real estate company out oh, there. Oh, wow, very cool. Um, and that was okay, but it didn't. Um, I had wanted to be an owner at Remax, and the owner at that time wasn't interested in selling. Sure. Um, I was a partial owner at, at Keller Williams, but mm -hmm. that really wasn't satisfying what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so we finally said, you know, that's when I started talking to other people. And, yeah. and, and at the end of that period, um, Next Home came up and it said, you know, you can have this franchise. And we were kind of startled as to how they were pricing it because yeah. it was very attractive to us. Oh, nice. And we decided that that was the way we wanted to go. Very cool. Yep. So you kind of i mean as a real estate agent you kind of get to be your own boss under the umbrella and limitations of the brokerage correct but now you have broader limitations i imagine cuz i suppose the franchise keeps you there's probably fences or guidelines but absolutely there are and and in any kind of franchise there's sure. there's guidelines that you have to follow um, and yes, do you have autonomy? Yes. It's, you know, sometimes real estate agents can be like herding cats, you know, sure. because they are, they are all independent contractors. That's a lot of egos. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right about that. But at the same time, some of them deserve it because sure. they do very, very well. At what oh, they totally. Do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got this thing where you can't be afraid of your ego because you start right. your own business, you're an independent contractor. You got to produce, right. and you have to have a little bit of an ego to produce, or at least appreciate the yeses that you get. And James, you touched on a really good point um, because real estate agents are independent contractors; they are mm -hmm. not employees. Right. So if if I'm a boss at a at a regular operation that has employees, whatever I say basically is going to go because right. their employees are going to come. Right. Well. Independent contractors have have a lot more autonomy and mm -hmm. the ability to say yes, yes or no. Now you can say, well, okay, if you say no too many times, you're not going to be working at this real estate company. Right. But at the same time, um, you kind of just have a little more flexibility and a sure. little more uh, boundary in terms of where you let people go. Right. Um, because of that. Right. And and some of them prosper really well and and do a great job. And I and I you know I give them a much larger net to 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 run with than sure. I would some of say a new person. Okay. So. So it's it's um, it's a different mentality, but mm -hmm. it's one that I've gotten used to. It's one that I've seen from both sides, both as sure. a, as an independent contractor within an office and now as the broker of an office. Okay, so when you that's interesting. So when you buy a brokerage or buy the franchise for this next home, are the other are the Keller Williams and stuff like that? Are those franchises as well? Yes, they are. So Remax Keller Williams. Um, Century 21 okay. are all franchise. Coldwell Banker they franchises. They are. Okay. And then you've got, um, well, you know, First Weber used to be the largest independent, but they were just. I bought. did not know that. <laughs> yeah, they, they were bought recently. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing a brain fade. No, it's okay. But they are they were recently bought, and they're more of a franchise now. All right. But there are a number of still smaller franchise, uh, smaller independent offices around uh, Dane okay. County. Okay. So I, I have met some agents that started their own brokerage, and it wasn't the franchise, it was just like. Bob's brokerage or something right. like that. Yep. What is the difference? I guess can you just walk us through that? I think um, 
a lot of uh, independent contractors as real estate agents um, migrate one way or the other. They migrate to a franchise because it's all done for them and everything sure. is put in place and, and they just basically have to bring in business. Sure. Others who don't care for that mentality mm -hmm. like the smaller offices because they're more shoot from the hip and kind of a little maybe a little more autonomy. Okay. Um, the problem that the broker has in there is you've got you know if you've got 10 people in your office all shooting from the hip you've got a lot of problems that that's, you've got to keep looking <laughs> that's at. That's wild west. Yeah, absolutely it is. Sure. So it's it's uh, a little of both. Um, I have been I've worked under both but I, I prefer the franchise model just okay. because there are a lot of things that if you're working this business that you want to just focus on working the business sure. and not where all the ancillary pieces come to right. help you. If you know what those are you've always got them at your disposal. Sure. Interesting. Well that's cool. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I like it. So did uh, did Next Home come to you, or did you go to them, or did you explore other franchises? I yeah, guess, how I, did you land on Next Home? I saw them first. They just kind of started popping up when I was, you know, googling like Next Home fran or, or real estate franchises. Yeah, um, there was another. I guess what I call a little more tired brand called Exit Realty, and oh. it was interesting that when I when I started looking at the two of them, yeah. Next Home just is so clean, so fresh, so ah. so important um, in terms of how they present themselves sure. and their culture. Um, it was an easy decision for us to want to pursue that. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's very cool. So they have systems in place. Now I imagine you got to throw them a nut. They do, and and a lot of people that we work with, even our um, I don't know that our. Uh, our, our market even realized we've not done maybe the best job at this point yet of, of getting that out there. But sure. um, our MLS um, that every listing goes into yeah. has about a 75 website search engine directory upload. Sure. Um, Next Home, when they started, was 10 times that. So our marketing is, is when we start, we're putting it into the, the MLS system and we're also putting it into ne Next Home. And our marketing is 10 times what our MLS is right now. Really? So we've got, I'll, I'll just give you a real quick story on, yeah. on one of the first transactions that I had when I, when I joined, which sold me immediately on Next Home. So I uh, had listed a property, um, $600,000 house out in uh, the town of Oakland, which is okay. just past Cambridge. Sure. Now, that's a long drive back into Madison. Yeah. And that's a huge price to pay for some place out there that's not a lake property, right? Right, right. And I'm thinking to myself, it was a referral. Actually, it was actually off a radio show that I had. It was oh, nice. At the time. But at that time, I'm thinking, oh, how am I ever going to get this house sold? I'm going <laughs> to have this house for a year or more, right? Right, right. So... We put it up on MLS, uh, put it into the Next Home system. Two days later, I get a call from a guy who's sitting in a coffee shop in Barrington, Illinois. Okay. And he says, um, that house you have out in town of Oakland, um, can I see it? We just sold our house in Las Vegas, and we want to buy another house, and we're just coming back into the Madison area market. Um, sure. So... Two days later, we set up a time for him to come up from Barrington and look at the house, walk yeah. him through the house, loves the house. He goes, I'll take it. I'm paying cash. We sold that house, James, in less than 30 days. Wow. How did he find that? He found that on the Barrington Chamber of Commerce website, which was one of the websites in this 10 times uh, marketplace that, sure. that Next Home has set up. He'd have never seen it on our MLS. Oh, very. Wow. Yeah. So it was just amazing. I mean, that told me. I made the right decision. So right they're off pushing the, bat. the game for awareness. Just oh, yeah. Get Absolutely. the houses in front of the people, the right people. Uh, that's all you got to do in, in yeah. this market because our inventory is like two months of inventory right now in a marketplace that usually yeah, it's has insanely six. low. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's crazy. The only time, if you're a home buyer, I'll just tell you right now is probably the best time to the end of the month, end of, end of the year, I should say. Okay. September 1st to December 31st is usually the best time for a buyer. Why? All right. Because we operate on the University of Wisconsin dates. Mm -hmm. So all those students are coming back middle of July, mm -hmm. middle of August. August, uh, end of uh, middle of September, yeah. And as soon as those apartments and everything are full, that's it. They just stop looking. Sure. Whereas they might have been looking for a house prior to that point. Uh -huh. So when that whole marketplace leaves the market, sure. All of a sudden, sellers are left with just the dribs and drabs or the relocation people that are coming into the market. Right. And it drops off noticeably. So right now, it's getting very quiet. A lot of home sellers are getting very nervous that they haven't sold May, June, July, and August. Oh, interesting. So buying a house in Madison, yeah. in Dane County. September 1 to December 31st, best four months always. All right. Selling would be... Selling is always going to be better. You always want your house on the market March 1, the okay. latest. And the reason is because why do we have all those April, May, June closings? Because mm -hmm. they started in February and sure. March. Sure. Interesting. Yeah. Playing the game. That's super cool. You got to play the game. You got to know the game. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So you, you start your franchise with Next Home. Was it you 
Or did you have partners? Or how did I had that a partner uh, initially that he and I went through all the stuff together. Yeah. And then um, he <laughs> he literally and I got out to San Francisco to do the three day of broker training. Okay. And um, looked up at me after eating a piece or working on a piece of pizza, and he said, "I don't think I can do this." Oh. And I said, "What? Eat the pizza?" Yeah. And he goes, uh, "No, I can't." do this 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 uh, this franchise oh really here pin drop well, there yeah oh yeah it was real quiet is this James. on day one or this is the the day we're supposed to go the next day we're supposed to go to three day of broker training to open up our office in a month right <laughs> we had already signed a five-year lease a five-year oh. development contract a five-year renewal or a, a <laughs> franchise agreement all right and, and he bails on me so um did you have an operating agreement with him yeah that okay. too okay yeah. so needless to say it was very messy sure. um for about a month or two put us back uh, about three months sure but i had a couple of other business partners that were putting up some money for it and All i right. went to them and and i said uh, you know here's what's going on are you guys yeah. still in and the most enjoyable thing that i had is they said randy we just wanted you you brought this guy along and we were accepting him because you brought him oh we just nice wanted okay you. so that gave me the courage to just go ahead and sure and, and we did and like i said we opened in verona um we were there in a new development that we thought was going to take off yeah but it just didn't and and yeah. kind of was uh, not really what we were expecting sure and just decided that we needed to be in a more visible place which sure. is where we're at now so i don't we don't have to dwell on the partner thing too long but was he a real estate agent as well yes okay at that time. so he yeah. just got cold feet kind of yep basically okay. that yep I mean, right. That was the only explanation I ever got, but sure. right, well. <laughs> wasn't one thing when I cared because I had a lot of things on my mind. At sure, that we time gotta, you got to go on damage control and <laughs> exactly. make it happen. Sure, yep. sure. So we don't have time to wet our pants or right. anything. Just everyone else was on board, James. So it was like, let's go ahead. Let's All right. just keep doing it. And, Very and cool. I've been really happy. I mean, I you know the people that we have right now, I'm just absolutely thrilled with, and mm -hmm. and the office. Um, is is as nice as I could envision in my head, and it's to win, you know, because we are a white box going into both sure. offices, and 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 they are just absolutely what I'm looking to do. So very cool, very yeah. cool. So are you when you got this this place, it was you as the agent. You added other agents since then, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. And how do you find agents? Um, that's why wow, that's uh, really uh, just quick that, that one be, sentence, right? <laughs> yeah. that, that could be anything. Okay. That could be anywhere. I mean. Um, I had uh, an agent who came over that I thought was was shopping me for another company oh. until I realized he was serious because he kept saying, "Well, can I? When can I join? When can I join?" And, and it's like, "Okay, sure." Um, I had um, I've had agents refer agents to the office, so um, that's wow. always a thrill when when yeah. someone believes that much in the office that they refer a friend of theirs, and that friend then buys into it and, and comes in. Sure. Um, I had um, I've had agents who just called me out of the blue and said, um, "My company's doing this, this, and this." do you do that and I said well let's come in and talk about it and we yeah. talk about it and they go okay I want to sign up so it really wow. depends and, and do I have to be on the phone do I have to be talking to people sure that's a, that's a huge part of my business sure so it's 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 you know it depends uh, time of year is, is a big thing like right now is a recruiting time because it starts now till about the end of the year okay because people are way busy during the summer and think right. that so many things are going to happen right. but then all of a sudden they get to August and September and maybe things didn't qu quite work out the way they thought and sure you know that grass is always greener mentality kind of creeps right, right. in a little bit and you find that you've got some really receptive people to talk sure. about the things that you have interesting okay so are you I guess, are you actively looking for other agents? Absolutely, all the time. Okay. I mean, I would love to talk to someone in the middle of June, but I've just learned that most people will seriously talk to me they between now and the end of the year. Okay, they're busy. Or right. Hopefully yep. they're busy. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're thinking, yeah. Okay. So then when it comes to finding agents, when they sign up with you guys, is there some type of a contract? Like they have to be with you so long or anything like that or there is a contract it's um i don't know that i call it a contract more than an agreement okay fair um, it's it's an independent contractor agreement okay where they can leave okay just as i can say hey this is you know really it's not, not the fit that i thought it was going to be so sure you know you're leaving mm -hmm. um but we try <laughs> to do a good job up front of that and not have someone come in just to turn around and leave sure because, um the point is that you want the kind of esprit de corps and the kind of rapport that you have with having a, a good group of people that work well together mm -hmm. So when you left the other brokerages, I imagine you had some deals that were still in the air. Correct. Right? Or what happens then? It depends on how what what the agreement says. In some cases, you leave a percentage of it back at that company. Okay. Um, in other cases, you may not. Okay. Um, but I 
I learned early on in my career that before I signed an agreement, I made a put a, a point in there that said that I owned all of my own listings. Oh, nice. Okay. So I never had to worry about that personally. Sure. But yes, I know there have been agents that are friends of mine who have been not maybe treated as fairly as they would like sure. to have been treated when they left and left some listings there. Right. The listing, remember, always belongs to the broker. It always belongs to the company. It does okay. not belong to the agent. Mm -hmm. Even though the agent may have gotten out, gone out and got the listing signed, right. it is still a company listing. Okay. So it always belongs to that broker. Sure. And the agreement specifies what you're going to get to keep and what you're not when um, when you leave. Okay. Interesting, because I imagine it's very tough to do, make a clean cut. So It can be, because you know the, that's why a lot of people, their business kind of dwindles this time of year. So if they're going to leave and not risk um, oh. any amount of dollar, they'll <laughs> leave the, the last time. quarter. All Whereas right. you're right, if they had 20 transactions going in June yeah. and their broker is not going to let them out easily, sure. that's a tough time to want like to leave. It's a little messy. It'll, very messy, yeah. Okay, gotcha. It's almost like the typical paperwork for closing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. So what is... From a starting your own brokerage, I guess, what have you learned so far that maybe was unexpected? Huh, that's a really good question, James. I, I wish you'd have sent me that by email. I <laughs> <thought> I... <laughs> um, you learn a lot of things. You learn a lot of things that um, you thought you knew that you yeah. have to reassess and reevaluate because sure. you realize that uh, what you were thinking was not correct. Sure. Um, I've learned uh, with the help of my, my, my gorgeous and delectable wife, Molly, that um, I need to be a little less... I'm a high D, okay? All right. If you know what, and you know from, from a disc oh, yeah. profile, I'm, oh, yeah. a, I'm a high D. And that's basically a, a bull in a china closet. Sure. So I tend to we'll just kind of done. Just kinda root things out of the way and, and, and just go, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and she's kind of helped reach in and say, you know, well, honey, maybe you should think about sure. this or maybe you should reevaluate sure. this or just give this person the benefit of the doubt. And so I've learned to step back a little bit more and just be a little more understanding than, right. than I ever used to be. So was and she I, high S? Um, she's probably a high S. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, she's very outgoing, very gregarious too, but sure. um, probably a high S. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a good learning experience that way for me to just kind of realize because I, uh, one of the things I realized too is when you're the boss um, and you're the owner, um, there is a higher expectation of what you do and, and mm -hmm. how you do it. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure that I'm going to be um, responsive to, to the people that, that I've brought on sure. and make sure that I can answer their questions or at least find the place where I can get them the answers that sure. so they can move forward. Because sure. my goal is to help them develop and build a career right. that's going to be successful for them. Right. And and that's really my ultimate goal is to make them, if they're selling and they're happy and they're doing things, then everyone is happy. Right. So let me, let me segue on that a little bit. Is the goal for you then to move away from having your own real estate practice, so to speak, and be more um, supplemental or helpful to the other agents you have, or is it to continue doing both where you have your own practice? I do have my own practice, but what you've hit on is is true. But I've reached a point in my career now, James, where after 35 years, 92% um, of my business last year was was past customers and referrals. 92? 92%. So I've reached oh a point God. now where I do not pick up a phone, I, you know, and I don't advise that for new agents because you've right. got to build a business somehow. Right. But I don't I don't solicit uh, for sale by owner. I don't sure. call expired listings. I don't do those kinds of things anymore. All right. But I did a lot. Uh, door knocking and the whole works when I was sure. younger because you had to build a career. You had yeah, to build you a had business. Yeah, you had to build your book. Yeah, yeah. But now, um, and, and what you're asking is, is I'm kind of at that crux right now because I love doing the sales that I do because I'm dealing with people that I've dealt with before. Sure. And maybe sold their house 20 years ago, but they just call me up and say, hey, Randy, we want to move. Can you come out and list the house? Yeah. And I love that. I yeah. just absolutely love it because there's people that I've worked with that right. I've loved in the past. Mm -hmm. At the same time, yes, I love seeing the success of the people that I have and love sure. helping them, love building them up, love making sure that they do the right things and, and, and are very successful. Right. But to answer your question, yes, over time, I will probably phase out more of my own sales and just yeah. be spending more time with the agents. Gotcha. Okay. That way there's that transition right. and you're not being pulled in 20 different And I'm kind directions. of in the middle of that transition right now. All right. Yeah. Do you, is there an end date or a projected end date? Are we I talking don't know. You know, five years, two years? That's a really good question because a friend of mine who I went to, um, who went to my high school and is, okay. somehow find, found me on Facebook, All right. just retired as a pharmacist, okay? Okay. And he sent me a note and he said, well, when are you going to retire? And I thought about that question and I thought, huh, if you retire, it's because you want to stop doing something that you're doing. Sure. And I don't. Or start I, doing something else that takes more time, true, right? But or, or doing something that you love better. But I love, James, I love what I do. I love it. That's since fair. I've loved it every day since I've been in business. And yeah. I love helping people. I love seeing their smiles. I love being to uh, you know, the person that they come to and ask questions about. I mean, I just love what I do. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, 
yeah, I might retire, but I'm probably going to retire because I dropped dead at a showing somewhere. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, 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 and I could be 93. I don't know. Where, but... where should we put the key? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know? what, what should we do with this body yeah, later? Right. I don't know. But, you <laughs> this know, is it's, where you'd want to be. <laughs> yes. And, and if I do, I'll have been happy because sure. I, I, you know, very, I encounter a lot of people. I, uh, a lot of people are clients and, and, and um, uh, home buyers and home sellers who are not happy people, who are not sure. happy in their life or happy in their job. Job. And I, Common. You know, I feel, you know, almost guilty that I love what I do. Sure. And, and so, yeah, I just, I don't, the re- word retirement doesn't even really resonate with me. I appreciate you putting the almost in front of that guilty part. <laughs> yeah. like, eh, we're in the Bible belt, but let's not go crazy. There we go. <laughs> we, it's totally okay to actually enjoy what you do. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Thank you. So, yeah, that's totally fine. <laughs> For 35 years, you better like it. Yeah. Well, you, there was a period, like I said, 2008, 2013, when everyone stopped so- selling or buying. Sure. And you've realized that you just lost an entire career and you have no idea where it went. Sure. That was tough. So how did you navigate that? Oh, man. I don't even know if I want to go there. It still makes me sick to my stomach. But sure. You just, I mean, you just started changing. I mean, I found a couple of guys who were doing rehab. So at okay. any given time and any part of the market, there are always people that have money. So right. I would be working with a couple of these groups that would come in and buy um, lowball offers on property. Well, there had to be so many available, right? And there were. And they would they would get some to sell. James, I tell you, the two hardest closings I ever went to are clients who went to closings and wrote checks, one for 21000 one for 28000 to sell their house. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You don't think that was a difficult closing? Oh. But So I get these remodelers who would go in, they'd, they'd take a, this little dumpy house and they'd put $100,000 into it and they'd put it back for sale at 400000 Sure. And then the high-end buyers always have money, so right. they would come in and buy it. Sure. And that was one. Then um, a lot of banks, because there were so many foreclosures, were looking for, for appraisal. So you'd literally be driving around doing what they call BPOs, bri- uh, broker price opinions. Okay. And you'd fill out this form and take a couple of pictures, and they'd send you a couple hundred bucks or whatever. Sure. I mean, it was... Um, just anything to get by. It was anything, yeah. It was just gruesome. And each year you'd say, oh, well, it's got to get better. It's got to sure. get better. And the worst thing is that Madison, the whole Dane County, bought into it. We had the most stable county in this entire state. I mean, we have the state government. We've got the University of Wisconsin. We've got all these insurance companies. We've got so many stable businesses in this this county. And yet we bought into all that fear and that that hysteria too. And it was just like people just were like deer in headlights. Just stop. Sure. You know? I remember talking to a plumber and he's like, well, the economy. And I said, dude, the economy is never going to get so bad that people are going to be like, I guess I can't flush today. Right. Right. Let's just, I know it's not draining. Let's just let it go. Like it, was it was never going to be that bad. It was interesting when the economy finally came back about 2013. So from mm-hmm. 2008 to 2013, there was sure. very little built for five years. Sure. Well, when you look at a property on MLS, it'll tell you the year. So, okay, so it'll say like zero is new construction and then okay. one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Well, when, when the economy picked up, all of a sudden when things started being built, you'd see a zero. Yeah. But then you'd go six. Because there was nothing else in between. Nothing got built during those five years. So it goes zero or six or above, you know? Wow. Yeah, it was strange. It took a while. It's it's kind of all filled in now in the last four or five years. But that was tough. All right. Were you able to make any money on some of those properties that were distressed? At the time, you were you were treading water. You okay. were just doing what you could so do. So you saw they were there, but right. you just, okay. And Maybe how it was... happened, We were t- I was talking about the radio show that I did with Bill. Yeah. We were doing a radio show on a Saturday morning. This is like November of 2013. Okay. And I had inadvertently left my phone. And you know what it's like when you're doing a live broadcast and you <laughs> you leave a phone on or something that starts yeah. ringing. My phone is out of reach, but it's ringing off the hook. And the, and the moderator is like looking at Bill and me and it looks like going like shaking his head. He finally cuts to a break, right? I get to the phone and I've got like 15 messages on there wow. and we're trying to figure out what's going on. So we finish the show. I go back. Well, the day before interest rates had gone into the threes for the first time. Oh, it was like 3.95, sure. 3.9. Right. People went nuts All right. and everyone came back into the market. And usually November, December, January, slowest time. Yeah. That helped us get through that, that nice. winter okay. and it has just taken off. Sure. So, so it's been smooth sailing since then. Smooth sailing, except the inventory. We're, we're just not okay, well. seeing the inventory. So we've had, um, we used to look at a marketplace of six months of inventory, six months of sure. housing inventory that you had available to buy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we've been somewhere around 2, 2.1, 1.9, somewhere in that range for now the last three years. Wow. And it's getting to the point where that's almost going to, I think, become our new normal and okay. people are going to have to deal with it. Sure. So unfortunately, if you're a home buyer, you go to a home, uh, a listing, a uh, new listing in the middle of June, of June or July. 45 people show up for that open house, mm-hmm. and it's, it's mind-numbing. 
Um, whereas now, you know, you just learn the time, so it gets past Labor Day, and now sure. it starts quieting down a little bit. But to buy a house in, in June or July in this market with only two months of inventory is brutal because you've got people who are writing offers with no home inspection, with no appraisal, um, you know, writing it for cash when they know they have to get a mortgage. I mean, it's really scary, and you really have so to So they're just sure. taking chances. They're absolutely taking chances, huge chances, because if they do pass on an inspection and there's something wrong with their house, they're paying for it. Sure. Big time. Interesting. Yeah, so it's it's a little scary out there right now with, with, with what people are willing to risk, and they probably shouldn't right. be. I remember talking with uh, Bill, the mortgage broker, right? Yep. And he was talking, because I said when somebody is writing an offer over, right, 20000 over or something like that, or 40000 over, he even mentioned one, where are they coming up with that cash? Because if the house doesn't appraise for that, exactly, the bank's not giving that to yep. them. That means that they're having to break their piggy bank. To get that money. That's exactly what happens. And if they try to sell that house the next day, <laughs> there's no guarantee that they would get that back anyway. But you know what they go into that mortgage with, James? They go into it with the with the feeling that, okay, if it doesn't appraise, the lender will write them a letter saying they're unable to qualify. Oh. Sometimes that happens, right. and sometimes a lender is able to do that. Okay. But sometimes they do have assets, whether it be a 401k or something like that, sure. and they're forced to take the money out of that to wow. cover the shortfall. Oh, so then they're paying tax on And that. they're paying tax and losing 10% of it, whatever. So, oh. yes. That seems it crazy can, to me. Yeah, it's it's kind of brutal right now. Has has it come back? Yes. Sure. Is it a much more enjoyable market now than 2008 to 2013? Absolutely. Well, if you're an agent, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> sure. That's crazy. So now you can have open houses and not even have to make cookies or anything. I, yeah, that's true. It's not just that like, yeah, hey, people are coming anyway, so it's <laughs> and, no big deal. And you don't have to go. You don't have to tell sellers to go around and put vanilla on their light bulbs and everything. Sure. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's it's interesting because I remember. I'm trying to think. The last time that we dealt with a real estate agent on a transaction basis, probably eight years ago, something like that. And that guy was telling us that the real estate agents have open houses essentially for marketing the agent, not necessarily marketing that home. Right. And, and but the it other sounds reason, like that has changed a little bit. Not really. Not really. The, okay. the other reason is uh, the other reason you hold an open house is it's a visual for the seller. Sure. Because most home sellers don't have any clue as to what you're really doing behind the scenes to market their home, who you're reaching okay. out to, what kind of sure. uh, contacts you're making, and how you're getting people. Oh, there. so like you're doing nothing. So, so if you do a visual and you show up with your signs and you sure. sit there for three hours and you talk to people, all right. Uh, the first open house, which is you know ninety percent neighbors anyway, right? Uh, and then the other ten percent. Just 10%, want to look and see what you got behind the curtains. Exactly. Or? Want right. to know, and the other ten percent are people who are, are working with some realtor already, so they're sure. not even viable candidates to, to gain business. Mm -hmm. So an open house, and, and I know I'll have some realtors who will say, oh, no, no, I've sold 10 houses off open houses sure. this last year. Very rare, very rare. I mean, All it right. does happen on occasion. I've sure. had it happen on occasion. Right. But for the most part, it's a dog and pony for the sellers. All right. Interesting. <laughs> That's so, I appreciate the honesty. That's awesome. So tell me, 35 years of doing this, there has to be a downside, a certain part that you don't like about the real estate industry or just the business itself there is and 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 it happened early on because um like like a lot of people when you get into it your family's small and your sure. kids are small yeah and um i it's very rare to to convince a seller to say yeah come on over to my house at uh, at 9 a.m on, on on monday <laughs> right no we, most of them believe that that we start working when they get off of work right. at five nights and weekends or yeah. every weekend mm -hmm. exactly and you get to a point where um you have to draw some lines. So um, I will usually, I, I went to a business mentor who, who who said that the best thing you can do in your life is put in your big rocks first. And big sure. rocks being the things that are most important to you. Mm -hmm. So if I have a kid who's in a, in a musical contest or, or going to be in a, a um, playing basketball or soccer or something, mm -hmm. I'm going to put all those dates into my schedule sure. right off the bat. Sure. And if you call me and you say, hey, Randy, why don't you come and list my house? Oh, James, that's great. Can you come Friday night at six? Oh, James, I'd love to, but I've already got an appointment. Now, I'm not going right. to tell you what that is it doesn't matter right, doesn't i've already matter. got an appointment but i could meet you at that noon on friday and take, i'll take you to lunch or i'll see you saturday morning sure so if i give them those kind of options they're always going to take that but mm -hmm. a, a lot of times when you're new in real estate you don't realize that mm -hmm. and you try to be everyone to everything you try sure. to sell everything you try to give everyone the time that you want and you realize that all of a sudden you've missed some things that you'll never get back from sure. your kids right. or from your spouse or your significant other right so you just have to learn that those things have to be put in first sure. and you have to adhere to those gotcha so set the boundaries exactly that's fair. Yep. That's totally fair. Is there anything from a, like you're talking to a guy who has has had challenges with employees, but I'm pretty sure every employer has. Oh, yes. These are my experience. That's the case. Have you had challenges in dealing with some of your agents? You always have challenges because okay. you're dealing with different personalities. But, sure. Um, what I try to do at this point in my career is try to see it from their perspective as mm -hmm. to what's happening. Sure. And, and 
I try to listen more than answer because I'm a I'm a fix it guy. You know? Sure. If someone tells me something, that's what a high D is basically. Mm-hmm. I'm a fix it guy. If someone tells me something, I'm gonna just give them a solution and, and right. move on to the mm-hmm. next problem that I have to deal with. Check the box, move along right. with your life. Yeah. And and in this case, I'll I found that um, a lot of times when I'm listening to people, they just want to talk. They just want someone to listen to their problem. Uh. So, <laughs> well, we may think that, James, but at the same time, you, 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 I just find that it's it's very helpful to be able to do that. Just yeah. No, listen. you you read yeah. my book, right? So yes. you know you saw yes. you read that part or listen to that part where i talk about that where i know that's the case yes i still hate it i you know i know i feel like this is a brutal waste of time if you're going to tell me about a problem but don't want to discuss solutions but you know i tell you that i've had more people walk out feeling better and more motivated to do what they're going to do if i just let them all right Sure. Um, and it's the same thing if someone's angry. You just, you know, you just let them get it all out because once they've worked it all out, then, mm-hmm. then you can kind of move on from mm-hmm. that. But um, yeah, I mean, you should know. I mean, you're like, you know, the multi entrepreneur. You've got like, I don't know, 16 things going on in your life right yeah, now. Yeah, I got we a few. Have, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be bored. Successful business writer. And, uh, and I mean, you've run the calls on call for I don't know how long. Eight years. Yeah. Eight years. Yeah. yeah. But so, I, mean, I got a radio show where I get pe- awesome people like you on oh, here. Oh, okay. So. Well, checks in the mail, James. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to say that I got paid for this. This is, this is pretty much just fun. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've, I've done radio before too and love it. I mean, it's just, it's a really personal way of, and if I were going to, if I were doing advertising for certain mm-hmm. things, I would probably do radio these days because it's just really when you're in the shower or you're in the, in a car or something, yeah. it's just you and the radio. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the few forms of, of personal media that are out there yet. Oh, completely. Yeah. Yeah. I used to, so I was putting on between 30 and 40,000 miles a year. When I was when I had my printer repair company. Oh right? yes, yes. So I remember talking with some buddies of mine that were, they were in tech and they were, they had windshield time as well. And we're just talking like it's you, the car, and the radio, mm-hmm. and that was so cool because you got I mean like you're almost almost interacting with the DJs, or the the music and stuff like that. I was never the person to call in or anything like that, but you're always listening, and it didn't feel like it's a DJ and five million other people. Right. It was a DJ and you. Right, exactly. Right, because I'm in this car and there's no one right. else. So that was it was a good feeling. It was cool. So there's a there's a warmth that comes from radio. I agree. And it's and it's a great way if you're doing any kind of advertising, I think, to reach people. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, a billboard just doesn't do it. TV is sure. so diluted that right. you can't even I mean no one pays any attention to the commercials on TV. In fact, right. you're running out to the bathroom or the kitchen to There's to, just so many channels. Them. Exactly. And that's the biggest thing now. You just can't make an impression. Yeah. Yeah, even my kid, he watches, um, he's into watching videos on YouTube. And I I just, I don't want to say beat into him because I don't mean physically beat into him. But I just, every time a commercial comes on, I just make this like, ah! <laughs> it's like, what do we pay for? <laughs> to get him to know the difference, because he's young, right? He's five right. years old. So he's got to know the difference between a commercial and the show that he's intending to watch, right? One, you got to watch out that it's a, a show that you want the kid to watch, right? That they don't have something brutal on there or anything like that. But two, I don't know what that commercial is. So I do everything I can to distinguish commercial. And commercial means annoying, waste of time, not what you wanted. And you just have to suffer through this for the shortest amount of time as possible right. before you get to the show, right? To just r- get rid of whatever message that commercial is trying to break. I'm just trying to do everything I can to run battle. over it. That's an endless battle. Right. I, uh, I mean, why is why is every sugary uh, cereal three foot high on a on a grocery right, shop? Because right. Because they right, know right. exactly right what they're what the market is. Right. Why why are why does McDonald's uh, advertise Happy Meals because they sure. know if they can get them at six seven years true, old true, true, have for the rest of their life. You know. But he's watching like now he's in the baseball right, so he's watching like major league crazy catches and stuff like that. Yeah. So the marketing <laughs> people are not like we're targeting five year olds with this, right? <laughs> yeah. You're targeting like twenty to thirty year old men that watch baseball. Stuff and are killing time for some reason. So these ads are geared towards that genre, right? Which is not a five-year-old genre. So, like, whoa, what are you watching? You can't have that. Yeah, you know, it's it's almost it's so insidious right now that there's just almost no way you can control it. Sure. I mean, you. I so I went out to my two of my two oldest, two oldest kids live out in the New York area, yeah. and I had them take me on a walk around their area when I when I first got out there. They've been out there a couple of years now. Yeah, and we're we're walking around, and I said, "Oh man, Dad's getting tired, yeah. so I'm just going to sit down and um and take a break here." And I had them sit down, and what do they do instantly? They pull out their cell phones. Yeah, right? and I take a picture of the two of them. You Thanks know, for traveling they're, all they're over the country. They're not talking to me. They're not interacting <laughs> with Dad. They're on their cell phones, right. both of them, and looking down. And I mean the the. the 
everyone, oh my, and, and I don't want to blame kids that age because it's almost everyone. Everyone lives off totally. these devices. Yeah. And how has our, our, our industry and our lives changed because mm -hmm. um, this thing is out there? Um, it's to the point now where everyone is an expert because of, they've got instant access to everything. Sure. And I blame McDonald's for that because they taught us where to drive, where to order, where to pay, where to get the stuff and All get right. out of there. They you know? systematize their own lives. And, and that's basically what, it, what these phones have done. Sure. And, and all these other details out there that are now running our lives because they truly are. That's uh, interesting. I would love to have um, a period where my phone didn't work for, for a week, you know, yeah. and, and just enjoy being part of life again because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you can't. I take my, my 21 year old who was 21 by the way today. So Colin Lenz, happy birthday. Nice, happy birthday. Um, and he, um, uh, if I go out to eat with him, I'll, I'll get like the first five minutes. And then the phone comes out, and he's texting friends while we're eating. Really? And it's like, it's so annoying. I just what want to reach over and grab here? that phone. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I just watched a uh, video on YouTube. That was an interview of, I can't remember the guy, but he was interviewing Larry King. And Larry King, this is just a couple years old. Yeah. Larry King pulls out his flip phone. Oh. <laughs> and he was complaining, Larry King was complaining <laughs> about his wife having the smartphone. And he's like, she's always got that thing. Yeah. And I, he's like, I like this because I can make phone calls, and that's it. It's a wave of the future. Yeah, the, he was just he wanted to experience life, and he feels like people are losing that because they're they're connected, but it's a limited connection because it's not yes. personable, right? Right. Yeah. So it's interesting. I'm like Larry King. This guy knows how to interact with people. All these changes are, are so exciting to me, uh, and I realize that you know I'll probably be long dead before even the the brunt of them come out. Sure. But, um, my wife and I were out in Las Vegas a couple months back. Yeah. And called a um, a lift car. Okay. And all of a sudden this car shows up, and we get in, and we look, and there's no driver. Um, Las Vegas has 30 lift cars that are now self-driving. Really? And there's a woman sitting in the passenger seat and, and a guy here, but he's not, um, he's not doing anything. And they can't, um, the only time that they have to touch the wheels when they drive onto a property, because they're not that, the okay. technology is not that good Sure, quite not that sophisticated, sure. But they're, that car is out driving, changing lanes and doing things with us in the car. And I'm thinking, okay, this is great. So in 10 years, because yeah. technology is here now, sure. in 10 years, what are we going to do with all the gas stations? We aren't going to need them. Right. What are you going to do with all the parking ramps? We're not going to need them because these sure. cars are going to drop you off somewhere and then go out in the country and right. sit on a pad um, till your end of the day and then come back into town. And sure. You, know, you get in and just it'll take you home. Wow. I mean, those kind of things are, are right here, James, to the point yeah. where they're going to happen probably in my kids' lives, but maybe yeah. not in mine. And I love that kind of stuff because it's just... It just energizes you to realize what's going to happen with right. all those te technology things coming in. You'll be giving virtual tours of houses. You want it to go all over the place. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, absolutely. There are windows that are out there right now that are coming into the marketplace that have the ability to collect solar power um, and, and actually heat a house so that you won't probably need a furnace at some point because of these windows. Have, oh, have interesting. Solar collectors that are in the windows. Sure. So all these things are just kind of like yeah. hanging out there right now. And, you know, we thought back, in, you know, when, when we were in school and you had these calculators, you know, mm -hmm. the, the Texas Instruments calculator you had on your desk, who knew that, you know, your phone would be everything at one point? And, I just ran into yeah. someone that had a scientific calculator out and was using it. Really? <laughs> and I thought... Um, there's got to be a way to do that on your phone, but that's a lot of buttons. And that's that's above my math level. <laughs> but yeah, she was saying that phone, some phones can do it, but it's just faster using the actual calculator. She was actually using the big fancy buttons that I don't know what they mean. <laughs> well, no, people still use calculators. They, All right. they do, yes. But you know, the changes that are coming are, are phenomenal. Sure. And, and it'll be the same types of changes that will happen in real estate because sure. you're right. You may not have to do uh, an open house. You may hire a self-driving bus to just take sure. people around if they want to. <laughs> I mean, we're to the point now where the, where the pictures and things are there. People are literally writing offers on real estate without having seen the property. Um, I had that happen once. Yeah. Um, it scares me because okay. – um, there are things that you can still see visually that you want to know about than, yeah. than if you buy a house off a bunch of pictures and sure. things. But it, it is coming and it has happening. And a lot of the millennials don't have that fear at all. They'll, they'll absolutely buy a house off of whatever they can get video-wise. Sure. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, it seems crazy to me. It does seem crazy to me, but at the same time, you got to accept that what that that's now going I get to be it. the norm. I get yep. it. Yeah, times are changing yep. and perspectives are changing, so it's all good. We just they're consumers. We keep moving on. So we will adapt to the consumer. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, or help them adapt. I guess as far as that goes. Um, tell me, since we're talking about marketing, what has worked for you in the recent past? 
Um, again, I'm, I'm probably atypical of what I would see in a real estate agent today because okay. what I do are things um, I've identified. Uh, I've had over 1,200 transactions close. So, have you really? Yeah, so I, I focus on those people. Sure. So I have a thing that we call Fun Day Monday, which okay. we do. It's, it's, a, it's a cheesy trivia contest that goes out the first Monday of every month. Sure. And I literally have two to 300 people that, that and it's a $25 gift card that they get from Amazon, right? Nice. But it's a cheesy question mm-hmm. and people, and it's a way for me to interact with all of them. Yeah. And I literally write half an afternoon off on that Monday because I do, uh, I have a template. So yeah. I'm, I'm telling you the inside secret now, James. Yeah, because I get these. Yeah, I have a template that okay. everyone gets basically the same answer, but your name will be in it twice, so it looks like I did it for you. Sure. And then I'll have a PS at the bottom. Well, the PS is I'll have uh, something that they'll that person will know. So it's like, James, really enjoyed doing the radio show with you. Now, you know that's me because no one else did that, right? Right, right. And so you know that I actually wrote this. Well, all I'm really writing is the PS. Yeah. Boom, out it goes. So now I'm, I'm sending that initial template out on this contest, and yeah. then half of these people, maybe not half, about a third of them will want to respond and they'll send me something back. And out of that, every one of them, they'll be like, oh, um, my grandma wants to sell her house next week. Can you give her a call? Here's her phone number. Oh, so nice. without even asking, it's not even real estate related, sure. I'll get leads and business out of it. Oh, very um, cool. I do a thing called uh, Most Special Day of the Year. So okay. every person that I know that I have their birthday, mm-hmm. they get a special email that day um, addressed just to them. And it's about some historical thing that happened on their birthday on okay. a certain day. Sure. So like on July 20th, when the land, they landed on the moon in 1969, someone yeah. got a, a special day of the year that said, oh, by the way, on this day in 1969, they right. landed on the moon for the first time. Mm-hmm. And it's a different thing every year. So they see huh. this every year. So that's, people love getting that because they never know what it's going to be. And I don't even know. I get a copy right. of it, but I never know what it's going to be. <laughs> um, so Clever. those kinds of things, client parties, other things that we do, I focus on the people that I've spent, um, um, that have spent money uh, with me. Sure. Um, and I don't really go out and solicit um, additional business right now because these people keep me as busy as I want to be also running the brokerage. Very cool. Yeah. Very so cool. Fun. That sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm loving it. You know, like I said, I don't envision retiring because there's no reason that I have to retire. <laughs> you know, if you're having fun, you're kind of already there, right? I'm already there, James. That's the, that's the goal. Cool. Well, Randy, I appreciate you being on the show here. This has been a lot of fun, and I think you've been more honest than most of the people that I have on the show. <laughs> that's a little scary, James, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> or, well, maybe the most honest real estate agent, right? Or broker, I well, guess I would say. Either way, I'll take that too. <laughs> Tell me. So I guess really quick, though, what's next? What's next? Um, just keep building what we're building. I mean, I, okay. we have a great office. I love the office. I love the people that we have. Sure. But I'd love to add another 5, 10, 15 people to that office. All right. All right. So that's so, what I'll be working. If you know any agents that are looking, James, you haven't called me. I will. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but I will. I don't know. I'm bound to run into a one perfect, or two. Perfect, perfect. And just say, just look Randy just up. Call and just call Randy. Talk to him. Just meet him for coffee. Exactly. Right? The worst you can That's say is- That's how it all starts. This guy's crazy. <laughs> and the best you can say is, well, I guess I'm going to the next home, so it's all good. All good. Cool. Cool. Randy, I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you, sir. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering and receptionist services for small businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com, as well as Draw in Customers Business Coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs in all stages of their business on the web at drawincustomers.com. And of course, The Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur in all of us, available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Randy Lenz from Next Home Metro. Randy, how can people find you? They can call my cell, which is always the best way. Call or text at 608-444-1100. Okay. My website is randy at nexthomemetro, or my email, I should say, randy at nexthomemetro.com. Awesome. Randy at nexthomemetro.com. Easy enough. I love it. Find us Aaron at 103.5 Wednesdays at 1 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m. We'll get this right yet. As well as at sunprairiemediacenter.com. We both talk at like Mach 50s. That's yeah. just the way we roll, right? Yeah. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night at the podcast link. Found at drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business. Enjoy your business.